the variety and the different gifts of the Holy Spirit. I would like to read a scripture from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. I am going to read from line number 12 to the last line. It's about 19 lines. And uh, I am going to go through them because these are the scriptures that are going to guide us through what we are just about to, uh, uh, to expound. First Corinthians chapter number 12 and line number 12 to line number 31. The Bible says, the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. And though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greek, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a heart, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, would not, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of healing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has alleged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where should the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our, pre our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the body of uh, the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked, lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its part should have equal concern for each other. I want every one of us to mark line number 25 and also line number 13. I go back to line number 13. It says, For we, for we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greek, slave of all free. And we, uh, we were all given the one spirit to drink. Line number 25, the Bible says, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. You can underline the word equal concern for each other. And line number 26, the Bible says, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophet, that teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with the gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kind of tongues, are uh, all apostles, are uh, all prophets, are uh, all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but eagerly desire, eagerly desire the great gift, eagerly desire the great gift. I would like us uh, through that scripture that we have gone through it has shown us so many things. We have gone through uh, many scriptures. And I have shown you an area to mark. Line number 13. Line number 25 and 26. 
And as you go through the giftings of the Spirit of the Lord, I want us to remind ourselves that there is no uh, gift, there is no ability, there is no service in the kingdom that is greater than the other. All of them, they are equal. All of them, they are important. All of them, they are supposed to build Christ's church. All of them, they are supposed to edify one another. There is no part in our body that can blag, that can be proud than the other, that can say that I am of all important than the other. All parts in our bodies, they are equal, they are important. They help one another to make the body complete. Never forget that. The Bible says, from the Spirit of the Lord, we have received these giftings. We have received these services. We have received these abilities. And therefore, uh, we need to come together. We need to make use of our giftings. Every one of us is blessed in one way, the way or the other because the gifts of the Lord are distributed over our lives according to the measure of grace in each and every one of us and according to the Spirit of the Lord. And therefore, um, uh, I am going to go through uh, some few points and I believe that they are going to help us. The work of the giftings of the Lord are to bring revival in the church. Are to make the house of the Lord be in operation. And Paul is urging the church in Corinth that they may not be ignorant. They may not be unskilled. In other words, he was telling the church, be informed have the ability, the skills, the knowledge of these giftings. Because without this knowledge, this gifting may cause confusion. Every person may demand to be heard, forgetting that they are supposed to edify, they are supposed to build the body of Christ. And I am going to Put these giftings into three categories. Three categories. And uh, put number one, the categories of the gifts. The categories of the gift. There are many charismatic gifts mentioned in the Bible. There are so many. Where I have led is not to the final. There are so many. The main areas of reverence are the book of Romans, where you can read the book of Romans, chapter number 12, line number 6, or you start line number 3 to line number 8. First Corinthians, chapter number 12, from line number 1 to the end, we can see something in the book of uh, uh, chapter number 13 of the same first Corinthians, chapter number 13 is that one we should be handled uh, later chapter number 14 still speak of the same and also in the book of Ephesians chapter number 4 and line number 11 line number 11 for the purposes of this study, I will limit myself to a consideration of the nine manifestations listed in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. And to simplify all the more, I want to put them into three categories. Category number A, if you are lighting, category number A, the gift of speech. The gift of speech. And under the gift of speech, there are three. 
the gift of speaking in tongues or tongues. Interpretation of tongues and prophecy. Under the gift of speech, we have tongues. We have interpretation of tongues. And we have prophecy. B. Gifts of revelation. Gifts of revelation. Under the gift of revelation, there are three. A word of wisdom. A word of knowledge. And discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits. Under the gift of revelation, there are three. A word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, discerning of spirit. C, the gifts of ability, the gifts of ability. That is the gift of faith, the gift of hearings, and working of miracles, working of miracles. Under the gift of ability, there are three. Gift of faith, gift of healing, working of miracles. Working of miracles. Uh, I will expound more from the three categories. Because the three categories make nines. Nine uh, 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 giftings. All the others are under those nine. Therefore, point number two, or another subtopic number two, it is in the form of a question. Whom may the Spirit use in the operation of such gifts? Whom may the Spirit use in the operation of of such gifts to whom is it everyone those are some of the questions that we need to ask ourselves and the answer you can put A under that question I want to give you about uh, uh, five answers of the same A any member of the body can it be used or may be used? Any member of the church can it be used uh, to receive the gifts of the Spirit. And I am going to back that in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 12 and line number 7. The Bible says, Now to issue one, the, uh, now to issue one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. For the common good. If you can lead line up 11 of the same. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he determines. And chapter number 14 and line number 26. Line number 26. What then shall we say, brothers? When you come together, everyone has a hymn or a word of instruction, a violation, a tongue, or an interpretation. All of this must be done for the strengthening of the church. For the strengthening of the church. In line number 31 of 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, the Bible says, For you can all prophesy in turn, so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged and encouraged. Therefore, we need to understand that everyone of us has got the ability, has got the ability to receive these giftings. No member should come behind any gift. No member should come behind, behind any gift. First Corinthians chapter number one and line number seven. In line number seven, the Bible says, 
First Corinthians chapter number 1 and 9 number 7, the Bible says, Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be refilled. You don't lack, you don't lack any gift. All these gifts has been given to us. And therefore, another answer B is we should be filled with the Spirit. We should be filled with the Spirit. That is Ephesians 5 and line number 18. Ephesians 5, line number 18. The Bible says that you may not be, that you may be drunk. You may not be drunk of wine, but of the Spirit of the Lord. We may be drunk of the Spirit of the Lord. Another answer C is we must be Decilious of being used in this way. We must be decilious. We must desire. We must be willing. We must be, have that desire to be used in this way. According to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 and 9 number that one. But eagerly desire the greater gift. Eagerly desire the greater gift. And another answer E. We must be the serious of spiritual gift. We must desire. We must desire to receive this spiritual gifting. According to 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, line number 1 to line number 6. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 to line number, up to line number 6. We should not be ignorant concerning the operations of of the gifts, we should not be ignorant according to the operation or concerning the operation of the gifts of the Spirit, according to the counsel or the advice of Paul to the people in Corinth in First Corinthians chapter number 12 and line number one. Line number one. If we should be modified by genuine love for the body. We must be motivated by genuine love for the body. And that is why Paul is telling the church uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, line about that one, that they may desire for the greater gift. And that is love. You can go through 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 and uh, line number one to the end. And pure desire to edify the body of Christ. You desire to edify the body of Christ according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 14 and line number 12. So it is with you, since you are eager to have spiritual gifts, try to excel in gifts that build up the church, the gift that builds the church. Because if we are not careful, the same giftings that we receive from the Lord can be used to break, to divide the fellowship of believers. Therefore, we need to be very careful. We need to be very careful. G, G, we should seek to excel in the operation of the gifts we should desire. To excel in the operation of the gifts. Let me tell you. Gifts of the spirit are like just a newborn baby. They are just like a newborn baby. Just the way you take care of that child. Until that child matures. And become a mature person. So the same with the giftings of the spirit. And Paul is urging us. In line number 12 of 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, that, uh, that we may excel in the gift that build up the church. The word to excel gives birth to excellence. Excellence. And the word excel is a choice, is a word of choice. I cannot lay my heart on you to become excellent. You need to make a choice 
to become excellent in all your operation. And Paul is encouraging us this morning that as we make use of the giftings of the Lord, we do so with excellence, having the mindset that they build the church of God. Hallelujah. They does not build the interest of an individual. They does not build one's strength. Our focus and our revelation and our understanding is only one. That the giftings of the Lord build the church of God. And whatever is building the body and the church of God is supposed to be handled with all excellence. With all excellence. Are you an intercessor? As you intercede, deep in your conscience, you are supposed to know that I am doing this to build the body of Christ. Am I your pastor? Yes. Then I am supposed to, to be reminding myself that this gift of a pastor is supposed to be exercised with our excellence so that it can build the body or the church of God. In all the giftings of the Lord, as we operate in them, then we are supposed to be remembering that they are not meant to build one's life or an individual or to, make, to cause us to, uh, to have a distinction or to have a big name, but they are meant to build the body and the church of God. And that's the reason why we sit in line number 13. And we are all given the one spirit to drink. We have been given one spirit to drink. And line number 25, we let that so that there should be uh, no division in the body, but that its part should have equal concern for each other. We should have equal concern. If all of us, we start operating and exercising these giftings as per the requirement, then I can assure you that in the house of God, we could just see, we could only find excellence in performance. Amen? Because our focus is Christ. Our focus is not us. Our focus is not to be established. It's not to be seen. It's not to be known. But our interest is to build the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And on that, then we need to put number three. Number three. The gifts of tongues. The gifts of tongue. We learned that uh, there are gifts of speech. We saw them being three. Tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. And now I want to go back to point number three. The gift of tongues. According to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 and line number 10. To another miraculous power. To another prophecy. To another the ability to distinguish between spirit. And to another the ability to speak in different kinds of tongues. And to, uh, and to still another the interpretation of of tongues, interpretation of tongues. This, uh, uh, it has got two functions. The gift of tongues has got two function. Function number one uh, is, uh, we refer it as a devotional tongues, devotional tongues. The purpose of which is to edify the person using it. The devotional tongues. They are meant to edify the person who is speaking. 
rika kazanto roboko zeneka hande lakoka yo zarahande reboliande i am building myself the called devotional tanks devotional tanks and the other function is the gift of tanks with the conjunction uh, of interpretation in conjunction as the gift of tanks which use in conjunction with the companion gift of interpretation of tanks is for the edifying of the whole church as well as the individual understanding hallelujah the one we have seen it as devotional it a device the person speaking in tongues the second one is meant to edify the church and this can only happen when the person speaking in tongues do interpret and if that person doesn't have the ability to interpret but there is another person who can interpret those tongues then they build the person who is speaking because he or has him or her understand those tongues and also it build the church it build the church of god hallelujah there are some guidelines for the use of tongue in public assemblies there are some guidelines but this guidelines they are not supposed or they are not meant to limit us from speaking in new tongues guideline number 1 is that it a uh, its use should be motivated by love its use wherever you are speaking in tongues in the public the bottom line is love is love according to first corinthians chapter number 13 and line number 1 Another thing is it should be accompanied by interpretation should be accompanied by interpretation according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 14 line number 5 line number 13 and line number 28 if you are speaking in tongues in public then it is supposed to be accompanied by interpretation or uh, yes interpretation so that it can edify the body of Christ number three it should be confined to three utterances from one individual in large gathering it should be confined to three utterances from one individual uh, uh, from one individual in any large gathering that is first Corinthians 14 and line number 17 but get me so that it may not bring confusion they may not bring confusion this only happens when these giftings are under ministration hallelujah I don't want confusion that pastor said that I am not supposed to speak in tongue when I am in public, you are permitted. Hallelujah. But when it is under the grace of ministration, then it is supposed to be limited to three people and also is supposed to be interpreted so that it can edify the body of Christ. Any believer who has ever spoken in tongues is capable of edifying the church through speaking forth in tongues any believer who is spirit filled and speak in new tongues is entitled or is capable to edify the church of God hallelujah therefore every one of us needed to desire let me tell you uh, the reason why you see protestant people many of them speaking in tongues it is the first sign of a spirit-filled person. And that does not mean that you are not spirit-filled 
because you are not speaking in new tongues. If you go through the book of Acts, you find Paul's meeting people who were spirit filled, but they were not filled in tongues. Hallelujah. Therefore, you are not supposed to see yourself as a lesser person. You are not supposed to judge yourself that you are not spirit filled. When the Holy Spirit wants to bring a tongue utterance through you, there will uh, generally be an inawareness of this for, uh, for time before you actually speak in tongues. The Spirit of the Lord prepares you. He prepares you. And he gives you the ability. The Bible says, and when the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon you, uh, he will teach you. He will give you utterance. Utterance. It is God who give us those utterances. We does not make them up for ourselves. It is the Spirit. It is the Spirit of the Lord that gives us utterances. Utterances. Listen to this. You do not have to speak out immediately. The spirit within the prophet is subject to the control of the prophet. Hallelujah. That is 1 Corinthians 14, 32. The spirit within the prophet is subject to the control of the, uh, uh, of the prophet. I can control myself. When I'm speaking in new tongues, I can control myself. You can wait quietly for the light moment to speak. The Holy Spirit will promote you clearly at that time. He will not interrupt what is already happening in the service. He will never cause confusion. For he is not the author of confusion. According to 1 Corinthians 14, 3. And that is the reason Paul is telling us this morning. That... The gift in a prophet is subject to a prophet. I can control it. I can control it. And line that 33, 1 Corinthians 14, 33, is saying that our God is not an author of confusion. Therefore, we need to be very careful. We need to be very careful on this. When the message is complete, you must wait upon God for the interpretation. Pray that you may interpret. Hallelujah. When the message is complete, then you are supposed to wait upon God for the interpretation. Pray. It is a, a request. It is an altar call extended to every one of us that we may desire to interpret. According to 1 Corinthians 14, 33, 33. But when this does not happen, then one who has spoken in tongues must remain quiet and not speak further if no one is given the interpretation. Hallelujah. But when this does not happen, the one who has spoken in tongues must remain quiet and not speak further if no one is given the interpretation. First Corinthians 14. You can go through it because Tongues are not supposed to harm others. I have seen people, myself, in the time that I've been in the kingdom, many using tongues. It's like they are cursing others. It's like they want to show their might. It is supposed when it is under ministration. Remember all this, it is meant, or I want to mean this, when it is under ministration. But when you are doing your own personal a devotion, when you are doing your own personal prayers, you can sail and go and go and go and go with all utterances of the tongues as per the Spirit of the Lord will enable you. It is not limited. However, hallelujah, when it is through uh, uh, ministration to the people, I believe and I know that the one who is speaking in tongues has got the ability to interpret of the same. And if not, God prepares somebody so that it may not bring confusion 
in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Now, when you are filled by the spirit of speaking in tongue, then we need also the desire to interpret of the same. Number four, interpretation. Interpretation of tongues. Interpretation of tongues. That is 1 Corinthians 12 10 C or D says and is to steal another the interpretation of tongues. Let me just ask yourself or we ask ourselves what could happen if all of us we gather here brother Jogona and the pleasant worship team plus the facilitators plus the pastor we are here, we are speaking in tongue. Mm -hmm. And the church is full. <laughs> we are not supposed to forget there are some people who come to church and they are not born again. They are not spirit filled. We may bring confusion to them. We may quasar them. Hallelujah. We can quasar them. And they will free from us. Therefore, as we said, that the spirit within the prophet is subject to the control of the prophet. Then we need to understand where and when these things are supposed to be applied. When I am alone and when I am having my own personal devotion, I feel them coming out like waters. Riba kaze. Yes, worshiping. Edify myself. But when I am ministering to you, I use words that all of us can understand and interpret. Amen? <laughs> this is companion gift to that of tongues. It is always used in conjunction with that gift. It is the supernatural enablement by the Holy Spirit to interpret tongues into the known language of the congregation through the help of the Holy Spirit. Through the help of the Holy Spirit. You cannot take a dictionary, a spiritual dictionary to interpret the tongues. You may not find those languages there. You can only receive that enablement through the Holy Spirit of God. The interpretation is just as supernatural as the utterance. Hallelujah. That's very powerful. The interpretation is just as supernatural as was the utterance. However, by this gift of the spirit, we are enabled to give the healing of what was spoken in the unknown tongues. In this way, the congregation may understand and be edified by it. They may receive and be edified. They may receive and be edified. Now the question that we need to ask ourselves, who may use this gift? Who may use this gift? The interpretation of tongue is given as the spirit wills. As the spirit we use. 1 Corinthians 12 of line number 11. All these are the works of one and the same spirit. And he gives them to each one. Just as he determines. I cannot tell Lahab. That from today you will be interpreting the tongues here. No. No. I cannot appoint you. But the Spirit of the Lord can appoint you and give you that ability to interpret. Therefore, in a, an actual and simple, a simple word, it is not limited to anyone. It is available to every person who is willing to be used of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you together? All who speak in tongues are clearly told. Let him who speak in a tongue pray that he may interpret. That is 1 Corinthians 14, 13. Here again, we must seek to develop 
a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. To the Holy Spirit. While you are worshiping God in gathering of believers, keep your mind and spirit open to the Holy Spirit. Frequently you will sense beforehand that someone is going to speak in tongues and that God is giving you the interpretation of the same. Of the same. As you commence to give forth what the Spirit is giving you, speak in a normal, clear, audible voice. Take care not to speak beyond the proportion of your faith, beyond the proportion of your grace. That is something that you need to note. As you commence to give forth what the Spirit is giving you, Speak in a normal, clear, audible voice. Take care not to speak beyond the proportion of your faith. According to the book of Romans chapter number 12, line 6. I want to add by this saying this. Avoid letting any persons, personal thoughts, feelings, all ideas creep into the interpretation. Let your own thought be in neutral and your mind be a clear channel for the Holy Spirit to flow through you. To flow through you. With that, now we understand what the tongue is, where and when to be upright. Because if we are not clear of the same. We may end up bringing confusion in the body of Christ. And uh, Christ is preparing us because of this revival that is happening whereby all the giftings of the spirit shall be in operation. How I pray that every one of us may desire to receive a gift from the Lord. And above it all, let us desire to receive the great gift according to 1 Corinthians 12 and line number that one and that is love love everything is meant to be done through love let us pray precious father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ the information that you have revealed to our lives is going to help us oh Lord to excel in our operations, in our service to the kingdom. As we use tongues, whereby it's the first primary sign of a spirit-filled person, and that has been used in the long way, Father. This is my prayer upon all my listeners and my followers and whatever this message we reach to law, that you may give us the ability to interpret of the same so that tongues in conjunction with interpretation will not only build and identify the person speaking law, but shall also be used to build the body of Christ. We thank you and we give you praise. We surrender ourselves to thee, Father, as we ask of you, Jesus, according to Acts chapter number one and nine number eight, that you may fill all of us with your power, the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we do pray and give thanks.